Hot air balloon rides are often seen as magical, bucket list experiences that drift quietly across the sky at sunrise. But behind every graceful ascent is a precise blend of engineering, meteorology and aviation science. For many pilots, ballooning is also a recognized air sport, governed by strict safety and operational standards. Today we explore what it really takes to get a hot air balloon into the air and how the scientific process forms part of a broader tourism experience in the Michalisburg. Our journey begins at Bill Harrop's original hot air balloon safaris in the heart of the Michalisburg, less than an hour outside of Johannesburg, a region known for its stable flying conditions and dramatic landscapes. It's just gone about 4.30 a.m. in the morning, and if you ever wondered what it took to get a hot air balloon up into the sky, there is a lot of preparation. In fact, many of these crew members rise earlier than some of our morning live crew members. So I'm chatting to Eric. He leads this entire crew team. Eric, tell us about the preparation. What does it take, you know, before any of the passengers arrive here, your guys are out here from about 3.30 in the morning, I believe, making sure safety checks are performed and everything is ready for that sunrise and when we can actually jet off into the sky. Firstly, I have to put the map balloon and check the map balloon where the wind goes. Uh, after that, um, if the wind, let's say the wind is going to east or it's going to south, I said, I said to the guys, the wind is going to the, to the south. So let's lay down the balloons towards uh, south. How do you check the weather in the morning before everyone gets here? When you wake up, what do you do to check and assess whether it's safe enough to fly? The, air, the, the chief pilot, he just sent the message, today is good to fly. Ballooning is entirely dependent on the atmosphere. Flights take place at dawn, when the air is at its most stable, before rising temperatures introduce turbulence and unpredictable wind patterns. Wind speed, wind direction, temperature and cloud cover are assessed across multiple layers before a single balloon is prepared for launch. For the crew, ballooning is both science and instinct, developed over years of experience. The chief crew coordinator has been involved in ballooning since the age of 16, inspired by seeing balloons rise over what was once the rural outskirts of four ways, long before the city expanded into this airspace. I used to stay in four ways. I heard the noise when I wake up, when I, as I checked in the sky, I saw the balloon, I said, I want to I wanna go and uh, work on balloons. The launch process begins with cold inflation. High-powered fans force ambient air into the balloon envelope, giving the structure its initial shape. Once fully laid out, the burners are ignited, introducing controlled bursts of superheated air. As the air inside the envelope heats up, it becomes less dense than the surrounding air, creating lift, a direct application of basic gas and buoyancy principles. The basket is tipped on its side for stability before being brought upright as internal pressure builds and the balloon becomes flight ready. Inside the envelope, control lines allow the pilot to manage airflow and venting. Rather than steering conventionally, pilots navigate by ascending or descending into different wind layers, each moving in a unique direction. Each balloon launches independently with basket size and passenger load carefully calculated against air temperature and lift capacity. Timing, spacing and communication are critical, particularly when multiple balloons share the same airspace. Before liftoff, passengers receive a detailed safety briefing. Landing positions, basket handling and burner awareness are all essential in a form of aviation where landings are controlled but never identical. So I will say get ready, do that, and then I will say landing positions. So when I say landing positions, this is the front of the balloon. It's pretty much the same as the front of a tree, trust me, that's the front. If it's going to be a fast landing, I'm going to tell you to go down further. So just go down further, hold on to the ropes, push your butts into the basket.
With final checks complete, the burners fire, the balloon clears the ground, and within moments, the noise fades. What remains is a rare form of flight, quiet, weightless, and dictated entirely by the wind. The flight lasts around an hour, drifting gently over the rivers, farmland and open wilderness as the sun rises. Other balloons appear in the distance, moving at different speeds and altitudes, shaped by the invisible dynamics of the atmosphere. It's also um, an era that's steeped in history. You told me some interesting facts about, for example, the, um, the uh, mission to the moon and the fact that the Americans used our technology, a space here in South Africa, to track that mission. Yeah, right below us, just slightly to the west here, is the uh, Harder Pierce Hook radar station, tracking station. And the Americans built this in the 60s to track the Apollo mission that landed on the moon in 1969. So when we talk about the science and the the engineering of getting something like this, a hot air balloon up into the sky. It's also no coincidence that we find ourselves in almost a cradle of science and engineering as well. Correct, yeah. This is the cradle of humankind uh, that we're in as well, uh, we're called the Mahalis River Valley. And there's so much history in this area. Mm. Just slightly to the north, southwest over there is the, the real cradle of humankind where the Stagfontein Caves are and where Mrs. Plez, the oldest fossil in the world, was ever found. We we spoke briefly earlier on about what it actually takes um, to get this balloon up into the sky. There are 12,000 cubic meters, meters of air. <laughs> If so, he doesn't burn, we don't fly. I was so just going to say, every once in a while we take a pause because Flip needs to burn to ensure that we stay up in the air. Once safely back on the ground, ballooning follows a long-standing aviation tradition. A celebratory toast marks a successful flight, a moment to reflect on the journey, the conditions and the shared experience of traveling with the wind. As you can see, we've just landed and, and the, uh, we were all in this wicker basket. Yes. basket is made of wicker since uh, probably a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people ask why they don't use modern technology like fiberglass or carbon fiber or even metals. Now, a lot of those materials are much stronger than wicker, but the reason for the wicker is it actually absorbs the impact and it's flexible. So when we land, the, the basket takes the impact of the landing and it's a lot easier on the passengers. Beyond leisure flying, hot air ballooning is also a competitive air sport. Pilots train extensively, earning licenses and ratings and competing in events that test precision rather than speed. We have the SA Hot Air Ballooning Championship once a year if there's an enough participants, which we had now in June this year. All, they only take the first two of the um, South African Hot Air Balloon Championship to actually go to World Champs because there's 150 people participating in the World Champs every year, across, all across the world. And so you have to win or come second in South Africa to get there. And there's a lot of different tasks you are given to achieve and it's a lot it's it's technical to actually navigate yourself to a task so it's not an easy sport you have to know what you're doing to get to the to the target Mount Grace Hotel and Spa works closely with Bill Harrops to make early morning access seamless, particularly for guests who prefer not to travel from Johannesburg or Pretoria. Here, the experience continues beyond the flight. After an early start and an active morning, the focus shifts to recovery and recreation. Guests enjoy breakfast, outdoor activities such as mountain biking and tennis, or spa treatments designed to rejuvenate both body and mind after the flight. The nice thing about Mount Grace is that it is less than an hour away from Jovic in Pretoria. You take a drive, you come here, you relax, you have fun, you do all sorts of things. You know, you can either go to the pool, you can go strawberry picking, you can go on the Bil Bilharo uh, balloon safari, um, at the spa. Um, it's an amazing spa and the variety that it offers. You can do hiking, you can do walking, we've got beautiful walking trails. Hot air ballooning may appear effortless, but every flight is shaped by science, experience and careful decision making. When combined with thoughtful tourism infrastructure, it becomes more than a once-off adventure. Above the Michalisberg, science doesn't just lift the balloon, it elevates the entire experience.